And welcome back to Philly Sports Spotlight. Time now to in introduce you to a couple of guys who decided about three years ago that the Philadelphia region in South Jersey needed a media outlet for soccer. And so was born Vuvuzela, the World Soccer Show, a show that has built an unbelievable following since its inception. And not just here in our neck of the woods, but I understand that people from around, from around the world have actually called into this show to talk to them about soccer. Please give a Philly Sports Spotlight welcome to Eric Nash. This is Eric right here. And his sidekick, Bob Long, is like Batman and Robin without the, coat, the, the, uh, the, the, the cape and the, <laughs> the masks. Gentlemen, thank you. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Phil. By the Thanks way, just so in case you're welcome. wondering, during his real life, this is an attorney, okay? This is Eric, he's an attorney, <laughs> and Bob is a recent Penn State graduate student uh, about ready to, to enter the real world, but their real passion lies here with, uh, with soccer. And, you know, I want, I want you to go back to the roots. I want you to tell me why and what spurned this idea of, of doing this radio show, Eric? Well, you know, I come up with a lot of crazy ideas, okay? <laughs> and, you know, this, this, this one actually had some legs, you know. I, I've been a lawyer for, for a long time. Oh, there I am. Uh, I've been a lawyer for a long time, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I decided that, you know, I was very, pretty good at what I did, you know, moving paid stuff back and forth, but I, I didn't feel it was very artistic, you know. I didn't feel like I was creating anything, you know. Big fa fan of uh, talking, obviously. Big fan of, uh, <coughs> big fan of, uh, um, radio sports and I decided you know after a couple tries of trying to talk soccer on the local Philadelphia networks and having them shut it down or not even giving me a chance I said you know what they're wrong soccer soccer is for real so I saw the big wave coming and uh, that's why that that's basically it I knew that you know this was the thing to do and I you know, figured out how to do a show and I started uh, selling it on the street you know trying to see what I could do well we're looking at a video that, that I shot actually there's plenty more video there uh, that I shot with you guys three years ago when you guys first started. This is when the women's team was still around, and this is when the men's team was just getting going. So you had a pretty big following. Mm -hmm. uh, you've since moved from those studios. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But what was the hardest part, part for you starting this out? I mean, the hardest part was just hoping that someone would take it seriously. I mean, I went to the first station that I'm sure we'll talk about uh, and basically said, here's what I want to do. And, you know, they said, it's a great idea. And that was it. I mean, you know, I had no idea what it should cost, what it would entail, how to even do a, do a radio show or any type of show. I was an attorney, you know? I was struggling to do that well. You know what I mean? <laughs> and all of a sudden, you know, I, you know, I'm having my, as you called it, my midlife, midlife crisis, you know, at 45 or whatever. But, you know, I, I said, I'm going to do this. And if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. And thank God, you know, Things have just always fallen into place, like like Bob here. You know, just I, the good things have just happened with the show, and it's really developing uh, a lot of momentum now. Well, so. I'm, I'm sure that Mrs. M Mrs. Nash is happy that your midlife crisis did not include expensive uh, sports cars, and that it included the radio show. Very unique name for it, Vuvu Zeller. Okay, now for those of you who don't remember, going back to 2010, the World Cup. Listen to this. <laughs> Okay, now, how annoying is that sound, okay? You, you, you can hear that all the way through the 2010 World Cup. Those, those vuvuzelas, uh, a South African instrument uh, that everyone really jumped on, they were banned by a lot of uh, MLS teams because <laughs> they really are annoying, right? But you jumped on it, and, and I think I like it for the name of your show. Thank you, you wouldn't change it, right? Uh, no, not at all. In fact, every time we, we make a move, we, I, that's the only thing I want is to keep the show going as it is because I figured with a Vuvuzela, you know, like it or hate it. You look at Facebook, there's 100 groups, both sides, okay? Like it or hate it, you don't forget it, and you know it stands for soccer. And that's what we stand for. All right. Well, you also yeah. stand for the, the city's only professional soccer team now, and that, of course, is the Philadelphia Union. And, Bob, this is where you come in. Here's a team that in their first year did wonders, went to the playoffs. A lot of changes have been made over the last couple of years. Right now, they're, uh, you know, they're trying to get back into the playoffs. They made a coaching change and personnel changes. They missed a big opportunity, though, this past weekend, didn't they, up in New York? Yes, they did. We were actually up at New York uh, this past weekend doing our – our remote up there at the Red Bull Arena had a great following. Sons of Ben came up. They took a whole busload up there. Uh, a great experience, but when you know the, the game started, uh, unfortunately did not go the way the Union would have liked. Um, the Red Bulls were able to strike first. The Union came back and tied it, but then Thierry Henry, everyone knows that name, just an incredible player. And when he came on, the entire aspect of that game changed, creating chances on both sides, and there you just see the goal that he put in. Uh, an incredible player. And the Red Bulls, they needed that win. That was their first win of the season. Well, this is why they needed that win as we take a look. Now, we're early, early. They're going to go until the fall. 
This is why the, the win was so important for both teams. Let's take a look at the standings, the current MLS standings. Uh, this is the Eastern Conference standings. Now, had the, had the Philadelphia Union won that game, they probably would have gone all the way up to second place. That's a difference. It's like hockey. This, the scoring is similar, except you get one more point for a win. They would have been uh, up around uh, nine, nine points, and New York Red Bull would have been in their rearview mirror. So, Because right now, the way it works out, they changed uh, the playoff seating. Now it's the top five teams in each uh, conference, Eastern and Western Conference, right? And that's where we want the Phillies to stay that's above, right. uh, Philadelphia Union to stay above that red line, right? No doubt about it. I mean, it's, it's still very early in the season, which I think everyone needs to remember. But the Union's come out and they've had some momentum in the first couple games. They came out a little better than I think some people would have expected. Uh, a win in a snow-delayed game out in Colorado was very big for them. And uh, after getting that win, to get the next win against New, the New England Revolution was big as well. But again, they still have yet to win a game at Red Bull Arena, and that's a problem. All right, now they just signed a, a, a Brazilian player, uh, Jose Cleverson, 33 years old, been around, uh, won a World Cup with Brazil, has played over uh, in the Premier League in England. He's uh, not one of those veteran leaders, but in order to get him, they had to say goodbye to a player that when he first came in was a big deal. Of course, we're talking about Freddie Adu. Just what would happen there with the Freddie Adu experiment? Uh, again, there was uh, Freddie Adu came in, obviously signed with DC United initially when he was 14 years old. Union picked him up. We talked about him on our show a lot, Eric, and we, we basically said that we thought it could be a good move, but it just never seemed to happen. Uh, many people thought he was overpaid, that he didn't work well within the system. And then this year, in an effort to restructure the contract, things just did not work out on both sides and as a result they had him still on the roster we're still paying him but he didn't have a number assigned at the beginning of the year they were trying to unload him it just wasn't going to happen it, it appeared for a long time uh, but then that's where uh, Cleberson came in yeah. and, and Bahia and now they have uh, Cleberson on loan which is an interesting proposition for the union in terms of where he'll fall in that rotation and when as well that's the bigger question all right we'll keep our eye on that one of course the other soccer thing that we really were keeping an eye on is the U.S. national team. Of course, they've made a big coaching change. Right now, it's still up in the air as to whether the, you know, the, the, the Klinsman cha the change from Bradley has made a difference. But they played two big qualifying games in the last two weeks. Let's start with the game they just, they just played recently against Mexico. Who wants to talk about it? Well, I mean, the Mexico game was, uh, the, the historically, we were ter terrible at the Azteca Stadium uh, in Mexico. So, you know, everyone would have been very happy. I mean, everyone would have been very happy to get a result, which would be a point for a draw. And they got that. And, you know, it was miraculous in, in some senses because uh, basically they were really, the Mexican team was really pouring it on in the second half. Okay, I mean, I got 15, 16 corner kicks by the end. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy. And, you know, but, you know, we held, we held tight. And that's what's great about soccer, you know. As much as, uh, you know, it, you can look like you're going to go down. The numbers say, you know, they're going to score. It's inevitable. It doesn't always happen. And sometimes you get a 1-1 draw. And it's a beautiful or, draw. Or sometimes you get a win in bad weather. Which is what they got in the game. Prior. Let's see this. This is the yeah. game they played. This is soccer in Denver. Okay, they, they could have played in Hawaii. They could play in California. Let's check out. This is the, another one of those World Cup qualifying games. Okay, played in Denver against Costa Rica. These Costa Rican guys were like, "What the heck is this white stuff?" Talk about this game. <laughs> that was unbelievable. It was just an incredible atmosphere for a game. Again, the question of whether they should have even played. They knew this weather was coming. There's no doubt about that. But. The game started, the US, USA scored, as you just saw, in the opening minutes of the first half, I believe the 16th minute, and uh, from there, just we're, we're content to hold the ball and, and, again, make an occasional counter here and there, but try to control the game, which they did extremely well, I thought, Phil. And, uh, again, there was a protest lodged by Costa Rica that did not go through FIFA. FIFA denied that request, and a huge three points after losing the initial one to Honduras. Right. And at that point, Honduras was at – at four points in leading the well, let's let's take it real quick because we gotta we gotta end this week. let's take a quick look at the uh the current CONCACAF standings there they are right there uh it's weird to see uh, mexico near the bottom but we still have many more games to go united states is in the middle if you finish in the top three you qualify for the uh for the world cup and that's uh, that's what the americans want to do once again you can't get the soccer knowledge anywhere else but uh if you call me up on the cell phone <laughs> it's the vuvuzela world soccer show it's on 860 wwdbam saturdays from three to five he's eric nash he's a sidekick like batman and robin right. bob long gentlemen thank you very much thank you thanks so. a lot okay, and I, and great. i'll talk to you guys as you know as the season goes on absolutely and go union go union but Okay, folks, time to take another break. Go ahead, keep going, keep going. When we come back, we're going to look back at LaSalle's amazing run to the Sweet 16. Go ahead, keep going.